What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a new and exciting episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household of Allie, Amanda, and Derek. Unfortunately, our pop culture correspondent could not be with us today. We have a very exciting project that we are doing at home that's taking place this afternoon and night. Uh, I can't really tell you what it is yet, but it's something with our home, and we'll, or I'm excited to share it with you guys in the future. It's a real moment for, for me. It's big. Mm-hmm. But it's, it take, like, I feel like the nostalgia factor. It's a, the, the nostalgia factor is through the roof. No, yeah. it's a big deal for <laughs> Natalie, too. I was talking to her about it. She was like, if you would have told little me. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. So anyways, uh, she couldn't be with us today, but we are hopefully going to hold the fort down uh, in this pop culture segment of our episode. We have the wonderful G Flip with us today. Very excited. Round of applause Woo! for G Flip. <laughs> Recently married G-Flip to their lovely bride, Chrishell. Also, G-Flip, uh, a new member of Selling Sunset. So we get into all of that with G-Flip, their relationship, the wedding. What a beautiful uh, relationship. It was nice to uncover some things about uh, that relationship. Obviously, their very successful music career. Uh, so all that and much, much more. Before we get into some of our, uh, you know, what do we call this part of the episode? Hmm. I don't know. It yeah, feels think like about a chit chat. We'll, uh, yeah, sure. All right. Well, we'll get back to you on that. Couple of housekeeping notes. Next week, Memorial Day weekend. If you haven't heard already, we want you to enjoy that Memorial Day weekend. We're shifting everything a day in the beginning of the week. So, Ask Nick is going to be on Tuesday, not Monday. And then a very exciting and special episode of Freestyle on Wednesday with James Kennedy, his wonderful girlfriend, Allie. Very excited about that. Obviously, we'll get into all the Vanderpump. Tea and drama thoughts maybe about ariana ariana i loved how then charlie episode <laughs> she, we, we all went back and forth anyway um that's gonna be a very exciting episode that it's on wednesday and then going deeper is remaining the same thursday with mary fitzgerald from selling sunset a lot to get into uh, uh managing part man- right ma- mm-hmm. man- managing, managing, managing something part- yeah we were excited to talk to mary about all things selling sunset obviously the drama between uh, Nicole and Chrishell and, and how Mary was thrown unfairly in the middle of all this. There was that scene in, in Selling Sunset where like Nicole is like talking shit to, to Mary about Chrishell and Nicole was like accusing Mary of like not wanting to be a part of the drama. And it just reminded me of one of those moments where someone is like not reading the room and they're like talking shit to someone who doesn't agree with them and not on their side. And they take that person's silence as like not wanting to get involved. And when that silence really means I don't agree with you Mm. and I just don't feel like arguing with you right now. That was the vibe I got from Mary in that, in that particular scene and moment. But we're again, we're happy to talk with Mary about obviously all things selling sunset, catch up with Mary on her personal life. What's up? What's new? What's going on? How's Romaine? How's Romaine? <laughs> little uh, piece of super lettuce. excited to have her on. So obviously a big week. And then the following week, following Thursday, we have Amanza from Selling Sunset. We're fully loaded on all things Selling sun- for Sunset for the next couple of weeks. And Vanderpump. So lots to get into. Super excited. Also, we have a update classic for you tomorrow. Drop in tomorrow for all you update lovers out there. I know so many of you are. We drop two more update specials every month behind Vile Files Plus, plus episodes of Better Days Than Never, plus Pop Culture Roundup Extra every Friday. So lots to get into. It's free to sign up. Just go to vilefiles.com to sign up for Vile Files Plus. It's rated fresh, amazing, and wonderful. Everyone loves it. And it's a seven-day free trial, so you got nothing to lose. And for all the people who love you know, our call, like we have a great texting the wedding call today. Uh, sweating the wedding. Sweating texting the, the wedding texting is kind of awesome. Wedding. <laughs> it's a combination of texting office <laughs> texting hours and sweating the wedding. It's all the, this is all just like relationship drama. Uh, lots of fun. If you are tuning in for G Flip or you just love our pop culture aspect or you just love our going deeper, just know that if you love those calls every Monday, it's a full episode of relationship stories and drama and relationship advice and stuff like that. So be sure to check that all out. All right. All right. Ariana was on. Call her daddy. So thankful for all the people out there that wished Ariana did our show instead of Call Her Daddy. 
Alex is a friend. She does a good job. Super bummed that we didn't get Ariana, but hey, great hustle by Alex. She she got she got the exclusive. We're we're excited for her. Super bummed for us. Also, the Charlie episode. If you haven't listened to that yet, is so fucking oh wild and amazing and truly giving. And also, just Charlie won me over so much on a personal level. For she's just very being interesting. Like, she's very open, articulate, she's, smart. She's positive in a way that doesn't feel phony. Good takes. Yeah, I I'm, I want her back for sure. Shout out Charlie. Yeah. Um, I do think, yeah, Ariana's interview was really, it, it just made so much sense because it felt like I would love to listen to Sandoval's interview, uh, like with Howie Mandel combined Again. with Ariana's interview for Call Her Daddy, because she just really like speaks to all of the wild claims Tom made. Like, for example, like trigger warning, when Tom said part of the reason that he was unable to break up with her and was forced to fuck her friend for months was because... <laughs> Ariana was feeling was threatened to kill herself was like Tom's worst Worst to fuck her friend this poor boy oh, this dude, I gotta put my dick in her queen. again oh. <laughs> really taking one for the team a brave brave boy um and Ariana clarifies that like his Tom's claims that she was going to end her life was she was saying if we break up like I'm leaving the show I'm deleting my Instagram like my life here in LA as that, I yeah. know it is over which makes a We've lot all said of sense. stuff like that like oh my life is over like and even again e even if in that moment she made a statement about thoughts of suicide like first of all like anyone who is dealing with that that shouldn't be weaponized against them if she literally said that and you actually were worried about that your solution to that was to fuck her friend yeah Clearly, you didn't take that seriously, because if you really thought their life was in danger, I, I really hope that you would have, you know, as, as Sheena said, gone on the phone, call the team, call the friends, call the family, be like, I'm really concerned about Ariana. You know, she, he, he went on a podcast right. and weaponized that against her. A hundred percent. He used it as like a soundbite. And Ariana is like very open. And she says, like, I've had suicidal ideation before, like, but this is not what that was. And so for him to like misconstrue it is just so quintessential Tom because like mm -hmm. the other stuff that came out, like we were saying right before, like how the night it all happened, they were in an Uber and like, can we get the Uber driver on the show? Literally. Where is that I Uber know driver? Where, where if you drove Ariana and Tom home from that gig where she's on the phone with uh, Sheena and he's on the phone with Raquel and you had to stop so they could go in for cigarettes and Ariana's well, venting like to you. they're arguing about like, they're in an Uber driver as this is on full with Sheena and Raquel on individual speaker phones. While while Sheena and Raquel are together well, after in watch New what York. happens live. Yes. Damn. Like <laughs> bonkers. I want the Uber driver. I'll make you a dramatic sizzle. Yeah, and the quote of the Uber like <laughs> Ariana says in the, her interview, she's like, Yeah, I, like when Tom go went in, I turned to the Uber driver and was like, Are you hearing this? Like, because again, Tom What did the was, Uber driver say? <laughs> I think the Uber driver was just like, yeah, crazy. Yeah, and like, then Alex <laughs> was like, oh, did he? Did you give him five stars? Or like, yeah. did he give you five stars? <laughs> Which I would say absolutely earned five stars. But it's like, it's clear that like, it, we didn't just catch Tom in a bad moment on the show of him being really rageful and blaming her. Like that has been his entire take since the beginning. Like there wasn't even initial remorse. It has been entirely like, I am the true victim here. And like, you're horrible and crazy for having emotions about this. And it is just like Tom toming at his most. Did, Tom. did Ariana speak to what she saw in Raquel as a friend and why when Raquel was kind of showing these signs of, of bad behavior or or not being a good friend to other people and this kind of like these kind of shady actions that it not register with her? Or, you know, why was she choosing to kind of look the other way when it came to Raquel while other people weren't? Did that ever come up or are we, do we know? I'm not sure that she addresses friendships. Okay. But she did address why she was initially attracted to Tom in the first place, which I feel like is the burning question on everyone's mind. Like, what the fuck could you possibly I mean, see hot. in this man? But like also in that's terms a, of... That's kind of an unfair question, though. I don't think You he's... think Tom Sandoval's hot? <laughs> I don't... I think he's... I have... He's traditionally attractive, and I think many people objectively really find him attractive. Yes, right now, obviously, like everyone looks at him and goes, "Yuck, ew, gross." But like, you can't say he's an unattractive person. Yeah, yeah, you can. Physically, I, he's I a think worm he's with a mustache. Physically, very wormy. But we did. Yeah. I, we got an email from someone who attended a Tom Sandoval and the Most Extras concert, and was like, "To be fair, it was a really high energy, great show from the cover band." And by the way, Tom is ripped. Was what. They wanted to share with us. Yeah, I mean, like, 
he, he, Tom Sandoval might not be your physical type, whoever you you are, but like objectively, he's a good looking person. And I, I'm just saying, in defense to Ariana, like she's dating this guy for nine years, and we're we're all looking at Sandoval based off of like all that's unfolded. But I will say, the second he made the comment about Lala quote sucking dick for a Range Rover, um, I fucking hated this sure. man. And so I like I especially but that's all this season. Yeah, but even when they do flashback clips, it's like, ugh. Yeah, he's... I'm not stumping for Tom Sandoval here. I'm just simply saying, objectively, like are, Nick. objectively, he's. I I could see why women are attracted. I argue to him. with okay. your objective point of view. Okay. I personally was really baffled I object and to your objective. <laughs> <laughs> as to why, what like what personal qualities, all Sandoval stuff aside, like what personal qualities would draw yeah. Ariana to him? I'm defending Ariana because from the Ariana, I. I don't know her that well, but she seems like a smart, intelligent person who's beautiful and, and seems to like she could have, generally speaking, her pick of the litter and her pick was Tom Sandoval. And I'm just saying, like, you know, as bad as he's coming across now, like, I don't think it's a reflection on Ariana because she was in love with this guy for, for nine years. Like, Certainly not criticizing her for it more. I did not understand it. But when she said, like, the thing that initially attracted to her was his earnestness yeah. and the way he likes to do everything, like, in full and how he doesn't just want to, like, make a drink. He wants to, like... He's a passionate guy. Yeah. And like pa he... People love passion, you know? People love, like, people think, you know, they're into, you know? They, if you see someone passionate about something else, then they can be passionate about you. You know, was... it's inspiring to see someone, like, give a shit about anything, especially nowadays. It's inspiring 100%. that not only did he just go to bed with Ariana, he left the bed and found another one with Raquel. That's wild that he, they, he fucked Raquel at their house while Ariana so was in bed. Fucked. What did you guys think of Ariana's like move, false move out that was actually a brand deal? So there are all these photos of her with a U-Haul carrying boxes out and then it came out that it was actually like the boxes had finance written on them and she was wearing a SoFi Get you, Get sweater. your bag. I mean... Kind of... And also, like, brilliant. You know what I mean? When you think about, like, all the ways that a brand deal could be executed, like, staging a move out so it's all the photos are going to be taken by the paparazzi, promoted on every single news outlet. You don't have to do shit. Like, you definitely only have I a hope few she of got, those. I hope she got paid for that. Yeah, you got to get a big paycheck. Because you can't be Huge. pulling that constantly. Like, they, you can only whip that out every now and then. Well, yeah, because there's a level of credibility that she she took a risk to do that. Right. She took a risk by making a, a like staging a false claim and making it seem, you know, especially I'm, I'm sure a lot of fans were like, oh, fuck, yeah, Ariana, like you're moving out, you know, whatever. Only to be like, ooh, just kidding. I was, you know, and I think it's great. I mean, get your bag. But yeah, you can't keep doing that. So I hope they paid her a ton of money because, yeah, you, you can't you can't do that. You can't just keep moving That's, out. You can't. Well, not only the moving out, you can't keep making false claims. Or do things that people could interpret as deceptive, as deceptive too for you for for you to do ads and things like that. I think it was great. But yeah, you're threading the needle. You know, and uh, I just hope they paid for the privilege of jumping on the drama. I it, it should I hope it better have been a six figure deal. Well, you know, it was a seven figure deal. Was Jeff mm -hmm. Bezos's engagement ring to Lauren Sanchez? This is his high school sweetheart, isn't it? I think that was his first wife, right? I don't. I thought, or maybe this is like his neighbor or something. This is the person who he was famously having an affair with before the divorce was finalized. But to his first wife I, of twenty five. Okay, years. I don't. Maybe I'm, I'm. I don't really know much. But my understanding is this: like, I mean, it's one, one richest guy in the world. It's like he started dating someone he had some sort of rapport with, which I think in itself is kind of interesting. I mean, at least he's not going around and. And you know, this throwing his dick everywhere. Yeah, and this is maybe I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> this engagement comes after they've been dating for five years. Like a lot of friends were like quoted as saying they're so happy he finally did it, and it makes but sense. But he got that divorced in twenty nineteen. Yeah, really, that's very wild. nice. Very nice people. I would like to say when I was doing a bit of like research to, to cover this, I will say let's not forget the sexting scandal. Do you remember this when Jeff Bezos like? Part of, there was a lot of speculation that like the only reason he like got divorced or like kind of fessed up to stuff was he was being blackmailed with like both like images and text messages of his like mistress while he was married. Yes. Oh. And that was Lauren Sanchez. And one of the texts, one of the s I'm putting sex in like very heavy air quotes because like I don't know that I would consider this sexy at all. But he said, I love you, a live girl. 
I will show you with my body, my lips, and my eyes very soon. Like, a live girl. Hello? Is he uh, fucking robots? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. In defense to Jeff, Jeffrey, we are not meant to be reading people's sexting. It is weird. Go back and read old love letters that you sent. Go back and read old sexting messages to your current partner or former partner. You will cringe about the shit that you said in the moment when you're all horned up, the both of you, it can come across as hot. But it's fucking weird to read like in a dramatic reading we remember, what did we have derek read the other last my time? load my, oh, yeah. <laughs> i want you to take my load again and again yeah this is fucking gross yuck but like when you're when you're sexting with someone like that, that that's such a violation of people's privacy you're not yeah. even sexting like even just trying to spit game if text messages get leaked about like some move some guys sent to someone or uh, a, a message like some woman sent to a guy Everyone likes to read and be like, oh, that's yuck. What an ick. Like, ew, ew, ew. it's just like, you know what? Fuck you. You know what? They're actually, they're fucking trying. And they maybe they thought it was smooth because as we all know, the difference between an ick and something is hot is essentially what you think about the person saying it. Do you think they're hot? Do you want to fuck them? You know, things like that. And it's such a, I think it's such a bullshit move for people to get their hands on people's personal messages that are kind of vulnerable, especially like sexting or trying to spit game and then act like they're fucking Casanova. That's a valid point. And I think the alive girl thing is because all the other stuff, it's like, yeah, I get it. I'll show you with my body, my lips, my eyes. Yeah. Like that's the kind of thing where it's like no matter how you spin it. And these are very intimate text messages. And I, I think say good for you. I mean, the Je- Jeff Bezos was a, a nerd in a garage like 30 years but ago. And now he's like this girl. buff, bald dude. You know, a live <laughs> He's girl? like fucking Mr. Clean. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is this? I don't under- I mean, Maybe I'm not. What do you mean by a live girl? That's what I mean. Like, that's, I, what, I said. that's what he said. How, what did he say? He said, I love you, a live girl. That's what I said. Is he fucking robots? That amazing. Girl. He's like, Alexa. He's like, <laughs> okay, well, given that it's Jeff Bezos, I can see why you think that. If anyone's fucking robots, it's it's him. It's yeah. Jeff Bezos. But a live girl could be like an inside joke. Maybe she's the life of the party. Maybe you know, it could be a million things that don't include him fucking robots. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not supposed to be fucking reading their like personal message. You know, the shit that Natalie calls me. I don't, you know, like yeah. I don't want people reading all that shit, you know? It's it's whatever, but like you could easily go, <laughs> Oh my god, like you didn't really say that you until early. <laughs> So pop off, Jeff. Congratulations. You know, I'm sorry if he cheated. That sucks. Like, weird. But like, his ex seems to be crushing it. She immediately became like one of the richest people in the world. Yeah, that's what um, Loot was all about. That TV show on Apple TV Plus was like kind of loosely based off of that. That Nick Lehman was a writer for. Yeah, absolutely. Friend of show. Friend of show. Just for details, like the ring, I think was like 23 carats or something insane like that. And it was on a $500 million yacht. And I just... So yeah, bigger than Natalie's. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Two point like, what? Five mil? Yeah, two point five million dollars. You're walking around with two point five million dollars on your on your hand. I get you're like the richest person in the world, but don't, don't like that you're a literal target on your back. Like two point five million dollars. Like, wouldn't you feel like that'd be a little scary to carry around? Well, I, if that was all you had, if that was everything. I'm not talking you know about, I mean? no, 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 no. But no, I think in, in, because they're so rich. Yeah, but you're missing my point. It's not about, it's not about their ability to replace it or that $2.5 million to them is like a, a nickel. It says that $2.5 million to everyone else they're walking around this to be a earth target. with to be a target of theft or, and I'm sure they have security or whatever, but that's the thing. Like you're literally wearing a target on your hand. For if someone figures out a way, that's two point five million dollars. I mean, literally even if they sell think the about black what market, happened. Not that I know anything about the black market, but even if they had to like sell it at a discount, that's a lot of fucking Pretty money. Steep. It's, yeah. it's it, I would I get nervous with the ring that Nally has on her hand, and it's I mean, for, compared to that is like a fucking piece of yarn. But there's substantial value to that. It, it makes you a little uncomfortable knowing that you have so much money or wealth or value. Like so easily out there, it just it it would make me uncomfortable. It's not about them like, whether she loses it or it's it's replacement value to Jeff. It's just that you know there's a lot of desperate people out there. Well, think about Kim in Paris. 
The, yeah, the thing the robber yeah. said to her was the ring. That's all they want. That's what they came for. Yeah. I, that's why, like, wearing jewelry is, in flashy jewelry, like, it's, it's, I'd get scared. Like, anything, that's though. Scary. But I mean, also, yeah. like, being on a $500 million yacht, like, I wonder at a certain point if they're desensitized because they're constantly, like, they have, like, a they might, disturbing yeah. amount of money so they can do whatever they want. Like, and so they're constantly in these environments that are like, must be incredibly secure because there's like these obscene luxuries that like they're having, you know? Oh, well. To, Good right, for him. To conclude, I think a very wholesome story is that Harry Styles. Uh, oh, not the uh, guy who killed his roommate over a hot pocket? Oh, my God. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's actually do that. There is a man who in Kentucky, I believe, who allegedly shot his roommate for eating the last did they kill pocket. him that's him shot he shot so the guy survived it, it would appear can i see the photo <laughs> i <laughs> like, thought it was going to be like a 19 year old no it's just like a grumpy old man situation oh what like roommate faux pas would make your blood boil the most like make you most enraged i mean just in general my roommate like faux pas would be like leaving standing water or food in the sink Clean your pots and pans. Yes, people. You know, respect the common area. You know, other than that, like I have a pretty, I had a pretty casual roommate policy, which is just like, this is both of our houses, and you don't want to. And like, I think this is a golden roommate rule for anyone listening is who's about to move in with a roommate. You, like, it's your place, but it's also their place. And the more rules you fucking have, the more likely both of you will not feel comfortable in your own goddamn apartment or house. So respect the common area, you know, if you want to be a filthy, be filthy in your room, but do your best to respect the common area. No standing water in the sink. And when it comes to things like food and clothes, I think it behooves you to have a generally open door policy. You might have to finagle that a little bit, you know, because like one person, you know, but it's just like, I would always say to my, my friends, like, listen, if you like, like my clothes, like help yourself, whatever, like put it back. Don't, you know, if you ruin it, replace it, whatever. Food wise, it would be like, you know, a lot of frozen pizzas back in the day when I was in, in my 20s. And it's sure. just like, man, like just replace anything you eat in a, re you know, in a reasonable time, you know? So it's like if they eat the frozen pizza and don't replace it two weeks later, that's fucking annoying. But like, you know, if you start you start labeling your food in a fridge. That's not a house that I want to live in. You know, like this is, oh, well, that's mine and that's yours. Stay off limits and everything's labeled or, you know, it's just it was more like. You want your fridge to be your fridge and you want your house to be your house. So like I always like I always thought a general like what's mine is yours policy within reason as long as we're respectful. But like that always worked well. And early on, I had a like a kind of anal roommates early on where I was like, I don't want to be here. You have all these like yeah. rules in my fucking house. Like, like you are militant with yeah, your it's just I also, like I feel like whoever labeling their food. It's like, you know, what? I don't. This is fuck you. Something else I've observed is that whoever has like the most like stringent cleaning standards, I feel like has moral righteousness, like where they're like in a good way or you disagree in a way where I'm like, I think it should be more of a conversation within reason, like in terms of I think with like certain cleanly like bacteria, germs, countertops, like standing water, stuff like that. Like I'm all for like, yeah, kind of a non-negotiable. Got to keep it clean. But like if somebody likes for there to like not be shoes by the door. Or like for there to like never be anything on like Oh yeah, fuck you. But I feel like whenever I've had those kinds of conversations with roommates in the past, like there's always this kind of like, and I'm cleaner than you, and so therefore I'm right. Yeah. You're a nightmare. If you are an anal person who has very particular cleanliness habits, that's on you to make sure that you either live by yourself or you live with someone who shares in that policy. But like, yeah, like to sit there, move in, and then start throwing all these like and like rules. try to shame your roommates because yeah. it's like no, it should be a total conversation, compromise, negotiation. And but I just also like everything else, up for an expectations before you move in with people. Like you just say, I'm a little messy, I'm not filthy, but like what's mine is yours or not. Like, do you label food? Like you have to have these conversations up front, uh, or or otherwise, yeah, because you're you're not gonna get your roommate, your 22 year old roommate, to drastically change their habits. You because, can't change them. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> because you are uh, OCD in, the, in, in, in terms of the cleaning department. But There you have it. Yeah. Derek was on jury duty when we uh, recorded the G Flip episode. So Allie was matting the... Uh, Allie it? was being a woman in STEM. She was holding down the fort. She was stepping up and... She... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She... 
<laughs> and she deserves a lot of credit. And she Save very nobly but she's not on camera. took the hit. So uh, not we be... also have a, a new team member, Addison, or happy to, we're excited to uh, bring to you. At the household point. grows. The, the household grows. The household is growing. It's great. We're a, a, a growing family. Well, this is wild stuff. All right. Uh, again, lots of lots of great stuff coming up for you guys. But most importantly, we got G Flip. So let's get to them. Hey, all you true uh, true crime murder mystery junkies out there. Well, we have an amazing new game for you. It's called June's Journey. It's an incredibly fun app. It's a game. It's a game on an app. And you basically get to solve crimes as, as June Parker, the legendary June Parker. Dive into June's captivating quest to uncover a scandalous hidden family secret. Escape to a bygone age of mystery, danger, and romance. It's June's job to discover the truth behind the unexplained death of her sister. Oh, always the sister. Well, it's always somebody in the it's family. It's always like a family yeah. secret. <laughs> well, you need to solve the, mis- the, the, the mystery. And for all the people, who, again, who love a true crime doc or a true crime podcast, this is the perfect game for you. You know, sometimes like when I'm having like a really long day, like especially if I'm in work mode or like if I'm in like improv mode, whatever it is, like it can be really nice to just have something that like is a, an escape from the world, but also engages my brain. Like how you're lo- like with the, the game, something that's so fun about it is like you're looking for these like very subtle hidden clues at times and you feel so smart when you find one. And it's just nice to have something that's like captivating my brain and so if like there's something else going on that i'm feeling like stressed or upset about like having just like a little spot where i can like exist and play a game and have a little break from all of that is always so wonderful so let's see if you have what it takes can you crack the case download june's journey for free today on ios or android june it needs your help detective that's right you can be detective it's amazing Download June's Journey for free today, again, on the iOS or Android platforms. Discover your inner detective when you download June's Journey for free on iOS or Android. Gee, welcome. Thanks, mate. How you going? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, We usually like to start these uh, interviews with, uh, I ask my guest the question, how is your heart? But you are recently married. Yeah. So I presume your heart is full of love. Is that accurate? My heart is warm and feeling cute. All right. Well, congratulations, <laughs> by the way. Just a big round of applause for, oh, for G bro. and yeah. Chriselle. Thank um, you. Yeah, I was so excited to, to see the announcement. Um, it seemed like it was kind of a surprise to the world. How much planning went into this? Like, can you... Give a little inside scoop is to the wedding of, of G Flip and Chriselle. How did it all come to pass? Uh, it was very unplanned and okay. very untraditional. Okay. Love that. I'm, um, I recently got engaged. Did uh, you? Well, in January. And so. Congrats, man. Yeah, thank you. But I'd love to hear your kind of wedding process because I'm, I'm taking notes from anyone who's willing to like share their story. And... Oh, well, not a lot of planning went into it. I, I, as, a non, <laughs> as a non-planner, love that. Yeah. I'm, I'm super into the non-planning. Yeah, because Shell's already done like the, you know, big traditional lot of planning wedding before in her life. And um, yeah, I'm not big on traditional things. Um, and obviously just me and Gushel being together is super, you know, to some people very untraditional. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, Day of, we just picked outfits from our closets. Not much thought went into the outfit, you know, planning that for months or anything. And then, um, yeah, just went through with it day of. And it was honestly the most fun and beautiful day of my life. And it was the most exciting and, like, the best memory I have in my group of memories. That's that's incredible. How, like, how did you both decide to do it? my my fiance and I were watching The Office. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever seen The Office? I've seen a few cheap okay. episodes. Uh, there's an episode <laughs> where Jim and Pam were like, I just woke up today and decided I want to get married. And they were going to get married at a courthouse. Is that similar to the conversation with you and Chriselle? Where like one day it was like, should we get married? Or how did how did that conversation come where you quickly decided to you know, get married? Or was there conversations leading up to that? There's definitely conversations leading up to it because... Chriselle, um, you know, didn't want to go through with another big traditional marriage planning, mm-hmm. huge, super heaps of guests. I've never been big on that either. 
And we'd always say if we ever went to Vegas, you know, we'd probably get married. Okay. And then um, we ended up going to Vegas and then it, everything happened just like we said it would happen. It's incredible. And well, um, yeah, it was just, it was super beautiful and super cute. And um, yeah, obviously there's a lot of people who don't agree with it and uh, we get backlash for it. But for us, just for me and Chrishell, like it was just so us mm -hmm. and it was just so awesome. And we plan to do a ceremony every single year. Because we're like, why would you just do it once? Oh, so have, you you want to have a almost like a a wedding every every year, every year in so different you, locations. Love that with different amounts of people. I don't know, you know, like you have a birthday, you celebrate your birthday once a year. Like you, when you're married, you're like you're with this person and you spend like every day with them. Why don't you celebrate that once a year? Like I'm into I don't this. know why it's I a love one. It. I like this. You know, people will renew their vows like yeah. 50 years later or something, or 20 years later, or 10. But I love this every year type of thing. I think every maybe year. like take a trip and like a you know take a trip different theme every year. Yeah, in the different locations because I'm sure you have loved ones all yeah. around the world. So being able to have ceremonies with like exactly. the various groups. We have like loved ones that weren't there, you know, um, when we got married. So it's like fun to be like, well. There's another date. So then, you know, it's really, I don't know, it's t totally untraditional. Um, but for me and Chriselle, we, you know, we love each other. We want to celebrate our love and we want to do it every year. And we also just fucking love throwing a party. So Obviously. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming the I do's were very special, but I always like, you know, in these types of, you know, beautiful days and memories that, that couples share, mm -hmm. I, I like to think of like very you know, unique moments, you yeah. know, like. There was a moment when I got engaged where I was lit, you know, looking out the car door and kind of thinking about our future and yada, yada. But it was like, that was a moment for me that mm -hmm. was kind of special. Was there a moment on that day for you that really stood out between you and Chriselle or just like a moment you had internally thinking about the relationship that you had um, that like really meant a lot to you that you kind of go back and replaying your head over and over? Wow. Um, I think so many parts of that day. Um, I think writing my vows was a big one because I really, like I write songs. Mm -hmm. So I've got a little poet inside me. So I wanted to make sure that my vows were, you know, the, the perfect way to describe, you know, my love and my feelings for her. Um, so that was nerve wracking. Um, and, uh, rehearsing that, um, on the way there to the chapel. Um, and then I think just afterwards, like we did like a round of photos and stuff and us just like being cute and holding hands and just celebrating the night together and the next night and just being like together and being like, I love you so much and I'm so happy. And we were just like, it was just the best time. Yeah. I wish you were there. It was I, so fun. Me too. Well, thanks for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we just, I'm just kidding. we've got it's more fun. coming up. Yeah, that's yeah. right. There's, there's so <laughs> many year, more. So, so many more. Can I come next year? Yeah, bro. Great. Love this. <laughs> Love this. What is something about the two of you? Like, is there something that after meeting Chriselle, you feel like she has taken maybe like an insecurity or a weakness that you have and helped you? you know, through it mm -hmm. or just help you feel less concerned about it and vice versa. Is there something that after meeting Chriselle where you've helped support her with an insecurity or a weakness mm -hmm. that you have where you guys are really just kind of uh, elevating the, each other? Yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of people would look at me and Chriselle and think that like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like how did this happen? Um, but we really a couple of hotties. I don't know. What's, <laughs> what's the problem? <laughs> um, I think we just complement each other really well. Um, I think, you know, we both have kind of similar career, like that we're both, you know, in the spotlight. We work in the entertainment industry, so we both definitely understand um each other's schedules and you know, when we get busy and you know, work is a priority sometimes and we're both very understanding of that. I think when it comes to like a healthy relationship, you got to have security within yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like just as individuals, we're both very secure people. We're secure in ourselves, and we know like our own worth. 
So I feel like when you're secure in yourself, it just makes your relationship so much more, like it makes it easy because you're not, you know, there's no trust issues. There's, you know, there's no insecurities about, oh my God, this person's going to fucking leave me, you know? So I find that we're both very secure in ourselves, but we also give each other the support to be secure in ourselves, to like, you know, encourage each other and be like, you know, you're great. And like, you know, this is, you know, just giving each other that kind of support. Um, and I, I think just like we didn't know we were going to fall in love. And there was like the, this beautiful like two weeks. Yeah, I, that we, to be honest, I, apologize. I don't really know like your origin story of how the yeah. relationship came to be. Would, would you be willing to share that? Yeah. Um, so we met briefly in 2021, just like cross paths. Okay. Just my friend Tones and I, who's an artist in Australia, um, she was friends with Chrishell and Chrishell was showing Tone's houses over here. So we just like met in passing. And then um, the following year, then this is how I remember it. And Chrishell would be like, oh, I don't know, but she's flame emojiing photos on my story. I reckon that's <laughs> flirting. That's flirting. Yeah. Come yeah. on. <laughs> well, handy. I mean, it, it, it can depend on the photo. No, you're right. It's no, flirting. No, the flame emoji specifically. Because as, 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 an, as an engaged man or someone in a relationship, I'm very careful with my flames, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't throw out flame responses. You got to be careful with your flames. Yeah, you got to be careful with your <laughs> flames. Like if it's a buddy of mine, you know, I, I know, you know what? You're right. Flames are flirting. I don't think I've <laughs> ever sent a buddy a flame. Well, maybe I have. But like, I'm joking flirting with him. Yeah. yeah no, it's a flirt. Yeah. It is. It's a very flirty what did, emoji. What, what did Chriselle call it? She was like, I flame all all my friends. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm a lesbian, like, wearing a bikini. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, like over, I don't know. I just I just took, like, when there was a few in a row, it wasn't just like one, just one. <laughs> um, but I thought that was a little bit flirty. Um, and uh, then me and I think I messaged Chriselle because when we'd previously met, um, She's super friendly as she always is. And I was talking about how I moved to the US and I'm still like trying to find my place and like trying to make friends. I feel like when you move to a new city, it's really important. You make like a foundation and find like a friendship group just for like mental health and mm. just for living. Um, and I remember telling her that when we like met briefly and then um, so I thought she was like being a little bit flirty. And then I was like, um, hey, do you want to catch up? Um, uh, and then something came up that I wanted to still meet some friends and I think she asked, do you like, do you, do you want to meet some of my friends? I remember you, you know, trying to meet people over here. So she actually threw a party for me to meet friends, which oh, I oh, thought was very, generous, um, yeah. very nice. And I didn't believe it was like for me, but it was cause she's just like so cute and nice. And she's like. I wanted you to meet some people um, with a cute little smile. And then I came to that party by myself and then I met heaps of really cool people that I am now like close friends with. Um, and then me and Chriselle were flirting a little bit and then we made out that night. And then, but we made out in the pantry. Um, uh, we love secretly. a good hot secret pantry makeup. <laughs> it was for a sure. secret up against the protein bars and the dog <laughs> treats. It was hot. <laughs> um <laughs> And then it was a few weeks later, then I played a show and then we had a little cheeky make out after my show. And then I was like, well, that was cute. I'll ask her on a date. And I texted her and I was like, hey, do you want to go on a date? And then she was like, I'm sorry, I'm straight. And then I was like, oh, we've been making out a lot for you to be straight. <laughs> um, That's <laughs> weird. <laughs> you know. I think everyone can be a little bit, you know, fluid in their sexuality. You know, I feel mm -hmm. like so many people grow up with this template that, you know, heterosexual kind of template just in life that, um, you know, people think, yeah, I'll go to college and you get a job, then you find your husband, then you have some kids and then that's how you live. Um, but sometimes things don't go as planned. And um, then I was looking for a house to rent and then I – Clicked Chriselle some house links because I was like, is this a good price for this area? I have absolutely no idea. She's in real estate. Yeah. yeah. 
she's in real estate. And then Chriselle offered to take me to like, to meet me and go to all the houses. And then um, obviously some flirting went down. And that's when Chriselle says that was the moment that she was like, oh, I feel some hectic feelings that I normally feel for boys, but I feel it for G. Um, and then, yeah, then we just kind of like started low-key dating, but it was very, like I wasn't looking for a relationship because Shell was going to go on like a show that was like the Bachelor, Bachelorette. She was going to go on a show that was like for love. Really? Yeah. She was ready, like signed up later in the year. Chriselle was going to do a different reality TV show Define, centered around finding, looking for love. Yes. Do you know the name of this show? It was hasn't been a show before. I think it was like a new show. Has it come out? No, because she didn't end up doing it. Was, it. She, <laughs> they were going to base it me. around Chriselle. Yeah, she was going to be like the, the you know, lead. the person that everyone. Huh. So we. I mean, really... I'm so happy for the two of you, but I really want to know what that show was going to be. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the full de- details, but I know it was a show that was like, like you know, sure, like yeah, the, yeah. you know, you got to something win around heart over Chriselle being the center, and yeah. a bunch of people. So we did not plan to fall in love. It was we were just like low key dating, and we knew that you know at some point she was going to go do this show, and it was going to be this cute little memory and then um the show changed to um gender diverse people as well because she you know realized that oh i can have feelings for people that aren't just i don't just identify as male um and then we kind of we just fell in love (laughs) we just and we were actively trying not to both of us but then it just happened how how are you actively trying not to? Well, because we knew that she was going to go on this show. Sure, so sure. I was like, there's no point falling for her. I'm just going to get You know you're heart. screwed as soon as yeah. you're like, we can't, we can't fall in love. It's yeah. forbidden. It's forbidden. <laughs> was, yeah. Was there any part of you uh, in the period of time when you'd asked Trishelle out and she'd said like, oh, sorry, I'm straight. Like, mm. was there any part of you that felt rejected in that standpoint or that was sort of, because it seems like so confident and cool that you were still down to be like, yeah, send some links, like stay in communication where I think it can be so easy to retreat after it feels like there's any yeah. kind of like mismatch in emotion. Like, what was that? Did that inform any of your relationship? Me and Chrishell already got along really well as friends and had like, like we already like had a friendship and we our banter's just like fire. Like we just get along really well just as individuals and as souls. So um, it, it, I didn't feel rejected also because, yeah, we'd made out twice. So I was like, you know, I'd. To, it just it didn't hurt my feelings or anything. I was just kind of like, <laughs> I don't think you're straight. <laughs> um, I knew that we were still going to be friends. Like I didn't like then like ignore her or anything. Like she even said like, I'm sorry, I'm straight, but I still really want to be close friends. Like we get along so well, and like I don't want this to affect anything. I was like, yeah, no worries. But then we went and looked at how like she helped me look at houses, and then then we just like every time we hang out, there's like. Flirting just went down without trying. It was just too, like, it was just, our connection is just so easy. It was just, like, electric feeling. Does Chriselle have, like, a go-to flirting move that you just love? That Like, you, like she does this thing and you're just like, ah, it gets me every time. I think at the start I was more of the flirty person. Or I just, like, joke around, you know? And then I think as she got a little bit more comfortable and confident then she just would dish it back unless like the first two times we made out we were a little bit tipsy then like you know then it's just like banter it's like heaps of banter and then we're just kissing (laughs) yeah every relationship in the public eye has uh, additional additional stresses that can create challenges in a relationship you know you have outside voices Mm. uh constantly you know, nitpicking and things like that. You mentioned obviously critics, and I, I, I imagine for you guys, it's elevated that mm-hmm. much more. Um, I know, obviously, the 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 best answer is just ignore it and things like that. But even like for Nally and I, just every once in a while, like like someone kind of breaks through that kind of barrier of we we just just ignore the noise type of thing, mm. and it kind of almost seeps in to the relationship where you can tell one of us is stressed about something Mm -hmm. that is a result of just the public being the public. How Mm -hmm. do you two 
uh, with uh, the ignorance and the crit- critics out there that you guys have to deal with it. How do you guys make sure that you kind of protect the relationship that you have and, and work through any of those instances where, you know, it's just one of those days where, you know, you should ignore it. You know, you shouldn't let it bother you, but like, we're only human and it kind of gets through. How do you guys go about that? Yeah, we do get like, I know Chriselle cops a lot of, you know, midlife crisis kind of things and like, why the hell are you with her? And I get a lot of misgendering and a lot of, um, you know, I think just being part of the LGBTQIA plus community, you know, we do cop a lot of hate and disrespect. I, I just feel like for me personally growing up, all the all the decisions I've made that are um that people do not like, all the decisions I've made in my life that people haven't agreed with or have, you know, not liked or have judged me for have been the best decisions I've ever made. So me coming out queer, fucking people didn't agree with it. People in my family didn't agree with it. People didn't understand it. Did I feel fucking euphoric? Absolutely. Came out non-binary. Caused a big stir. My family did not get it. A lot of people online didn't get it. But I, I got it and it made me feel that fucking good. You know, me being in a relationship with Chriselle, get heaps of hate, but it's the best and most healthy relationship I've ever been in my life. We got married in a very untraditional way, like day of in Vegas. Get judgment for it, but it was the best fucking day of my whole life. So anything I do and anything, you know, that I feel like Chriselle as well get judged on, like, you know, some of these things are like the best things that we've ever done. And when we look back on our life when we're old and grey and saggy, like we're going to look back and be like have a, you know, list of defining memories. Right, right at the end of your life that are going to be your highlight reel. And it's just funny that every single one is like the most hated from the public. <laughs> but it makes, it fucking makes me so happy. And for Chriselle as well, you know, she has, you know, things in her life that, you know, at the time or right now made her so happy doing it, even though you get judgment. Um, and I think that just fuels this resilience mm-hmm. in us as a couple and us as individuals um, that, you can cop so much, and I cop so much. You got in the end. You got to kind of laugh about it because sure. it's just like, oh my god! <laughs> like, you know, in the end, what's most important is, you know, if you're happy, just living and breathing every day with your group of people around you, um, and you've got to kind of have a strong, stable fucking soul and you know energy to just whack all the outside comments away. For sure. But I think we do a good job at um, keeping our self healthy so that we're both mentally strong. And, you know, when Chriselle cops hate or she might bring me like, oh, someone said this, it's like, baby, come on. We don't need to be sad about that. You know, we don't need to think about that. And it's obviously untrue, et cetera, et cetera. So I think we do a good job at actually not letting any of it affect us too much, to be honest. That's great. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's hard to do but the fact that you're able to do that is uh i guess a testament to you know your guys's relationship yeah uh you have a song uh called be your man yes uh i'd love for you to talk about it uh, share with your audience like what was kind of the messaging or what did you hope to capture through that song uh that you wrote well like i i said before with um how me and kashel were actively trying to not fall in love with each other and she was going to go on this show mm-hmm that's the time that I wrote this song. Okay. And it's because the, the main hook lyric of the song is, I'm not what you, you planned, but I'll be your man. Because she was going to go on a show that was originally was going to be full of men um, to find her person. So I wrote this song around that time. And I just like, pen to paper was pretty honest lyrically. Um, and then like production wise, uh, it's in a time signature called six eight one two three cat two, two, boom, two, cat, which is like associated with like you know a lot of like wedding dances and that kind of like little step groove. Um, so I I wanted to give the sonically the production a little bit of a fifties esque kind of vibe. So um, there's some like fifties esque kind of vamp guitars and the production kind of sways that way a little bit. Um, and then. 
yeah, it's just like a song that's like a bit romantic but a bit sexy and it's just, I'm not what you planned, I'll be your man. And it's obviously about Chriselle. Love it. Yeah. Now, does, when, did, when did Chriselle know that it was about Chriselle? While you were writing it, or did you surprise her? How did you kind of unveil that? Because I assume, I mean, I've never had a song written for me or about me that I know of, but I assume that'd be very meaningful and special. Like, yeah. how did you kind of present that gift to Chriselle? To um, I like Chriselle's ear on all my songs, like, because I think she just has a good ear for just music. So I show her a lot of demos, and then she's like, I like that one. Uh, don't like that one as much. I like the third one better, like, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I just, in a pile, I just played Be Your Man, a very stripped back. It was one guitar, just the first verse, first pre-chorus and the chorus. That was it. And just with a guitar. And I think there was like a little sub bass or something. Um, and I played that for her and straight away she like looked at me and she was like, oh, this is my favorite one. And I was like, oh, it's about you, darling. <laughs> She was like, no, it's not. I'm like, yeah, it is. Listen. Um, and then, yeah, I didn't show, I went and finished the song over the next, I think it was like a year. I Then I started fully fleshing out and recording all the instruments. And then um, I showed Chriselle like a more polished, finished version um, in my car and I filmed it and to film her reaction. And then, yeah, then she heard the more finalized version. And now it's out. It's yeah. amazing. It's a great song. Um, Selling Sunset, season six just came out. You're on it. I am. How, like when you <laughs> started dating Chriselle, uh, what were those conversations like for you to consider being on the show? What has that experience been like? There's certainly a lot of drama. Have you watched it? Oh, uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. Hectic drama, hey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's hectic so, uh, drama. And Chriselle was out posting. Uh, she was in a bit of a scuffle, I think, with Nicole. Yeah. We were going to have Nicole on the show. Were you? We, you know, she, I didn't, I didn't know, but we booked her before the sh season dropped. And then all this, all this drama unfold. And then Nicole canceled last minute. Oh. And then I was told that she needed to get her, she, she wasn't prepared. She mm. wanted a week. She, she booked herself next yeah. week. And I was like, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, we, we don't, we don't yeah. allow our guests to book. And then she said she had to, you know, get her story straight, I guess, was the language that I, that was relayed to me, which made me seem like, well, if you have the truth on your side, you usually don't have to get your story straight. You mm. just share your story. But yeah. anyways, I, I'm, I'm sucked into the drama, as you can, as <laughs> you can also, see. I'm also, you know, so, I'm uh, do you have any, of it. Do you have any inside tea? I mean, I'm assuming, like, for example, again, back to, like, you know, this show, Sometimes I get sucked into drama yeah. or I get, you know, whatever. And then, you know, you take your work home with you, whether you try to or not. Natalie's a sounding board for me to, to if mm -hmm. nothing else, to vent my frustrations. I'm assuming Chriselle uh, will, will vent to you. Yeah. All this stuff going on with Nicole, do you have any, any tea or anything that you could shed the light on to why this has blown up the way it has? Um, I think, you know, Chriselle went into so that was season six, went into season six and she was like, you know, Christine's gone. I don't think I'm going to have any drama this season. I really don't think there's going to be any conflict. I really think it's going to be a chill time. Mm. Um, I remember her saying like, there's two new girls on the show. Uh, Nicole, I'm already friends with and we're cool. And then Brie, you know, I've never met her. So I'll met her and hopefully there's no drama. Um, and then I remember Chriselle coming home one day and being like, oh my God, now Nicole doesn't like me. So Chriselle really went into it thinking that it was going to be a drama free season. And obviously now watching it, it's very, it's full of drama. It's actually the most drama I've ever had in my life. I've never like been in like fights in high school or had family drama or like anything. So even though I'm like, you know, secondhand, like off it. I'm like, sure. oh my God, this is hectic, darling. Like, what is your read on the Nicole of it all? Like, why do you think she is doing what she is doing? Well, all I have to go off is I just know that Chriselle really thought they were cool before they went, they went on it. I don't want to put myself in this drama, but like, I know that they were friends beforehand. She came to Chriselle's friend, Friendsgiving. She's been to the house a couple of times. Um, so they were actually, 
Like so they're cool. spending Thanksgiving together. Yeah, Friendsgiving. I'm yeah. guessing that's like. No, yeah, yeah, but I don't but, know. Yeah, it's it's, it's very yeah. American. Friends, we don't have Thanksgiving. Yeah, but <laughs> essentially, it's it's a Thanksgiving ish celebration. It's it's an intimate setting with friends, and then Nicole comes in hot and starts. Huh? It's hec. It's hectic. I don't know how everyone on that show deals with. It. Are the they chaos. still? And, and it sounds like they're they're still in conflict. They're not not seeing yeah, the beginning. Yeah, it's pretty. Of it's spread online. There's oh like yeah, a no, lot yeah, of we, stuff going down. Yeah, we've we've seen it. Yeah. yeah. How's Chriselle doing? She's good. She's good. Yeah, she's so cute. Fucking hell. All it's right. just. Oh, I said goodbye to her this morning. She's just like bye. She's her smile is the cutest thing. What did you think of Nicole? What did I think of her? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, think you're she, on the show. I mean, you. you, you well, I, she came after my girl. Yeah. Like, and they thought that she, you know, she thought they were friends. You know, that's not nice when you have a friend and then they get on camera and then they come after you when you thought you guys were cool. What's it been like for you to kind of? get inundated with that particular group in filming the show um I, they're all lovely actually i really like all of them they're super nice what's your favorite part about filming oh i don't like filming you don't you don't like filming no it's weird are you going to be a part of season <laughs> seven i think i mean like one episode or something i i'm like you know it's very much chriselle's stuff and i don't want to be part of any drama i don't want to get dragged to a dinner and then like you know shit hits the fan like i'm just like you know, I'm not that kind of person, and Chriselle's also very protective of our relationship. So very early on, um, I was never going to be part of the show. Like I was like, you know, I don't think, um, you know, it's my kind of world. And also, you know, we want to protect our relationship. And um, we were already getting lots of hate just, you know, being together. But then there was a conversation we had a few days before season six started filming. and. We were talking about, you know, representation and how representation can push the needle in the world and, you know, start conversations that are neat, like needed to be had in some people's homes. Um, and just the representation of loving queer relationships on TV mm -hmm. and me being non-binary. Um, we, we decided that, okay, maybe if we do some scenes, it just is us two together to just um, represent the queer community and you know, maybe it might start a conversation in someone's home about what being non-binary is and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So then we agreed to do that, but agreed to have no drama on me not coming to, you know, dinners or the office or anything. We just kind of- Oh, like if you didn't show up, the, like the rest of the, the, the gang couldn't be like, why isn't G here? Is yeah. there something going on and yeah. like shit like that? Yeah. yeah. The, that's just, because I just, I don't really, I'm not a dramatic person. I don't do conflict. I'd rather just like sit down and talk about, you know, why are you upset? Why am I upset? Let's work work this out. Our, you know, the conclusion should be that peace and harmony, we work this out. I'm yeah. just like, if someone's going off at me, I'd just be like, oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> like it just wouldn't work. I'm just, yeah. It, is is with Chriselle on the show, is, is she more conflict, um, not avoidant, but? But yeah, like she clearly is able to defend herself. Uh, I've I've seen many people call season six the season of Chriselle. Like see, people mm. really feel like she's shining. It's just her mm. moment, the way she's standing up for herself. Is that something she's able to turn on for the show, or 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 in life is she more kind of like you, kind of avoidant of conflict and removes herself? But obviously, with the show being what it is, yeah, you you can't necessarily just walk away well mary seems to be also she really hates conflict mm. too but yeah how is chriselle off camera when it comes to conflict chriselle you know doesn't want conflict or drama that's what i said before she really went into the season thinking that there wasn't going to be any because she's like i don't have you know beef with any anyone or a reason to um but i'm also very proud of her this season for sticking up for herself and you know not letting someone you know, talk shit. Like, I'm proud of her for standing up for herself. I think she did a good job and gave good points and, like, you know, came across, you know, quite well at, like, putting her point across and, you know, speaking her mind and... Yeah, people... Send the records. People straight. are really, really, really enjoying it. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've seen a lot of uh, that clip with her and Nicole. I've 
I haven't seen a single person <laughs> take Nicole's side. So clearly, Rochelle did a good job of standing up for herself. Yeah. It, I'm proud of it. I have a question, which is, you, you mentioned just like how part of the incentive for going on the show is just like representation and showing yeah. queer love and like healthy queer love. Mm. And in addition to kind of hoping that it might start conversations or just yeah. people might observe that and then become a little bit more accepting or just open to that mm. idea, like, are there other areas where you feel like people could be more supportive, whether it's like of the queer community as a whole, specifically as a non-binary person, mm -hmm. kind of areas where you feel like there's a real gap and people have the opportunity to like show more like support or advocacy or just like general decency? I think the biggest thing when it comes to like the LGBTQIA plus community um, and questions around it is like just educating yourself, like educating yourself and maybe if you have kids, your kids as well on what it is to be non-binary and understanding it. And just like education is the biggest like thing I find missing. Like people are quick to judge or make comments, but they don't actually like look into it or try to understand it. Or maybe, you know, talk to a queer person or talk to a non-binary person or talk to a trans person. You know what I mean? Um, so I think education is always the key. Can I, can I ask yeah. you a question to educate myself? Because I don't, yeah, I don't know the... Uh, answer because I was you know you just got married and then people were for like in a heterosexual relationship husband and wife mm -hmm. how as a non-binary binary person how would what would what would be the language or the word to describe is it like spouse and wife or do you guys go by spouse and spouse what would you suggest obviously spouse is a good one um partner is still a good one uh we we use and I think we kind of made this up but husband. Like husband, husband. It's like a mixture of wife and husband. Right. Yeah. yeah, husband. So wife and husband. Like, Chriselle says, my husband, <laughs> which I think's fucking cute. And like, people can hate on labels and everything. In the end, it's just a name. I like being a husband. How, and and how are you with if if someone misidentifies you and says mm. her or something like that? Yeah. How, how do you handle that? Or what would be if they mess up? Would do you prefer someone just to acknowledge it and then say oh, I'm sorry and correct themselves? How do you mm. go about doing that? Um, I think most people and most people in my inner circle or still my family members, um, they just quickly correct. They don't like they don't need to say sorry if they're like, um, what's a sentence? Shit. Um. Uh, is she hungry? I mean, are they hungry? You know, like mm -hmm. you just quickly correct and move on. I'm not someone that takes it personally. Um, uh, if someone like keeps uh, misgendering me, I, I would call Almost my... like you can tell they're not giving a shit to try to get it right, so to speak. Yeah, or yeah. they don't know. Then I'd be like, oh, just so you know, I use they, them pronouns gotcha. and okay. I'm non-binary. Um, but yeah, I think like it's, it, everyone's still learning, you know? Yeah, I, I would never, like, get pissed off at someone. Everyone's still learning. Like, my parents are still, you know, learning and getting their head around it. Um, and I think my parents at the start really were like, what? And then they've, they've seen that, like, more and more people are coming out non-binary and it's, you know, like, the world's changing. And um, so now they're, they're understanding it more and they're using my proper pronouns. It's cute. Um, but, yeah, I'm never someone to uh, get angry. quickly. Um, correct someone or or if someone if you use someone's wrong pronouns just correct yourself other than making music what mm -hmm. are some of your passions outside of work or you into pop culture like what are some of your guilty pleasures in life you know what do you watch on tv what what are you into oh, this is i struggle with this and um, my therapist also thinks that i need to get more hobbies so because i just do a lot of music because i like playing various instruments um and progressing in all those instruments. But then I also like producing. So like sitting on the laptop and using plugins and stuff. I don't have a ton of, I like to work. I like to do what I love, you know? I just do it a bit too much. You think you do it too much? Yeah, I do it way too much. It's all I ever do. Okay. It's all I, like, I just do it, like, I think it's a little, like, healthy to have other things to do. Actually, there is a hobby I have, uh, Australian, uh, my Australian Football League. It's called AFL. It's a sport that's not like NFL or soccer. It's, it's not like, soccer. And it's not rugby. It's its own sport. Oh. Well, how did, you're familiar with it, Amanda? I am. I did nine months in Sydney, so I feel like I have a vague Holy sort of familiarity shit. with that. Can you, you, how, what is it? Describe oh it. Oh my God, it's the best fucking sport ever. Okay, basically it's a huge oval 
like huge. I think it's bigger than an NFL field, soccer field. Um, okay, so the playing arena. surface is an oval. An oval, yeah. Uh, it's kind of a combination between mm, soccer, rugby, basketball. It's just a lot of sports in one, basically. But um, you have two teams. You have two goalposts and then smaller goalposts. If you get it through the two middle ones, you get six points. If you get it on the outer two posts, it's one point. And basically, you just got to kick kick the ball through and get a goal and you get six points. But you can tackle each other. You can handball. You can kick. You can just run with the ball, but you've got to bounce it on the floor. And um, there's no padding at all. And so, it's a, is it a, in the, it's a round ball like a basketball? No, it's kind of it's more similar to an NFL ball. Interesting. That you have to bounce? You, if you take, I'm not sure how many steps, it's like eight or 12 or something, and then you have to bounce a ball on the floor. Do we have a clip of this? Yeah, whack a clip in there. It's yeah. fucking awesome. I was trying to tell Jason and Brett about it on the weekend and get them to watch a bit of a game with me. Um, they love sports, and they both were watching it like, So have you become good friends with Jason? How was that with yeah. the, him being an ex? That's, it's totally cool with me, but I grew up with uh, parents who divorced, split up, got new partners, and then we all hang out together. Like my four parents go on holidays together. We have every birthday, Christmas together. So I've come from a, you know, I think um, a broken home that um, still has healthy relationships with their exes. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. I suppose if you grew up in that environment, I guess the... It told you that people can end relationships and move on and still mm. be happy. I think sometimes we have such a hard time mm. um, hearing about our partner's exes is because mm. we haven't ingrained this kind of one and only yeah. type of idea. But that that's not doesn't seem to be something that has ever bothered you. Then no, I feel and like Jason and Chriselle, like they're they're just really good friends. They were friends before they. Um, became partners but I think it also comes down to you know your trust and security with your partner like obviously if I was like I don't know wasn't secure in myself then I'd feel weird if they went and got lunch or they went and hang out or they go film together but like I'm totally totally cool with their relationship and their friendship and we all hang out together we've been on double dates with Mary Lou as well um and I just think they're all, they're awesome dudes, Brett and Jace. I like them. They're funny. Yeah. We went to dinner on Saturday night. It was cool. Uh, nice. What was the highlight? Of the dinner? Yeah. Did you guys talk shop at all? Or do you guys, I mean, My, it's one the, of those things where it's like, let's not talk about work or the show. And then it always like halfway through, you know, it's like, the it ho- always seems to come up. Because obviously <laughs> this weekend, the, 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 the season dropped. Um, yeah. Did any work stuff come up? Some work stuff came up, but then I think we all just like talk a bit of shit. I was trying to convince them. What was the shit? People want to hear the shit. Oh, I was trying to convince <laughs> Brett and Jason to be my backup dancers at my LA show coming up later this year. I okay. was like, it'd be fucking hilarious if you boys came out in tank tops, like full Channing Tatum style. Yes. And we're dancing and then just like rip your tops open. And Brett is so down. Brett's like, let's go to um fl- the floor room. Is that what it's called? Floor room? Mm. I don't know. He's like, let's go to the floor room now. I'll show you my moves. So- um, I'm on a text chain with them, sending them dance videos. So they're open to it. If Jason has Brett a... is. I don't know about Jay, but that makes sense. I feel like I feel like Jay is more tightly wound. Yeah, Brett's definitely more of a loose unit, hundred percent. What's your favorite tattoo that you have? I like Kylie. Thinks I'm cute. You know Kylie Minogue. Love. Yeah. She said I was cute. Did she? Yeah, I got it tattooed the next day. <laughs> Honestly, I love that. <laughs> she said I was cute in a podcast. She said J Flip's pretty cute. Really? <laughs> yeah, I got it tattooed uh, straight if away. If I call you cute, will you get it tattooed? 100%. <laughs> <Nah. laughs> Actually, BK, I do, I do, uh, I might, I don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty loose with tattoos now. I've got so many. How many do you have? Me and Chriselle counted um, not long ago. I think I have 79. 79? Got, okay, way more than me. I played a game with Chriselle. I got a tattoo of her dog's face on my leg and I played a game on the couch. I was like, hey, Chriselle. Can you help me count how many tattoos I have? I'd just like to know. And so she's counting and then she comes across the new Gracie. The new. Yeah, the dog's face I have like here on my leg. And she was like, oh, what? Oh, oh, my God, baby. Gracie. 
So, yeah. So much about successful relationships is communicating expectations and boundaries. We talk about it over and over on this show. Uh, what are some uh, expectations or boundaries that you and Rochelle have communicated with one another uh, that really makes your relationship work? Like, how do you guys make sure, you know, e even with Rochelle and, um, and her first career relationship, I'm assuming there's a lot of, yeah, just like maybe things that she wanted, had questions about, like, you know, you being friends with other women or her being friends with women or men. What are boundaries? Again, you, you're not a very jealous person. How do you guys communicate that mm -hmm. and just make sure that you guys are always on the same page so there's never a misunderstanding of intentions and things like mm -hmm. that when you're kind of out and about in the world interacting with people? You have fans, mm -hmm. she has fans and things like that. Mm -hmm. And how do you set up those expectations and boundaries? Um, I think, like you said, just having healthy communication. Okay. Um, I think we've had a good job throughout our relationship from the start, having healthy communication. I think at the start, me being non-binary, Rochelle had a lot of questions and being in her first queer relationship, um, you know, even her asking questions on and confining in me on how she now identifies because she's like, I'm with you, but uh, you're um, non-binary, am I a lesbian? Like, how do I identify? How do, if someone misgenders you, do I, do you want me to step in and say something? Like, you know, like she had a lot of questions coming into it because obviously she's never been with someone who's non-binary or in a queer relationship at all. Um, so I think we had a lot of communication at the start about all of those kind of things, which I think was super healthy. Um, but yeah, overall we, yeah, we, we talk a lot. We communicate a lot. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and on on the show, is there anyone that you've gotten to meet that you think is um, different than how we've gotten to know them on the show? Like, who's the most? This is what you see is what you get, or and and someone else versus like, yeah, you know, they're a little looser, or a little more chatty, or they're a, or a little bit something else that mm -hmm. the, the audience doesn't get to see when we're watching Selling Sunset. I think everyone is exactly how they are on the show. Really? Except I don't think they show um, how funny Brett is. You know, he's always, whenever Brett's on TV, he's always like, you know, it's a big month, you know, this month. We numbers. Gotta, yeah, we got to get these numbers. We got to be selling, you know, heaps of houses or whatever he says. <laughs> well, heaps I of think, houses. Yeah. <laughs> we got to sell heaps of houses gotta today. Get the numbers for the houses. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think every single one on that show is exactly how they are, honestly. And yeah. I, I, like, I thought, you know, being such a big reality TV show, I thought people would be totally different. But I think really everyone is um, the the same. I've never met Nicole, so I don't know. And I never met. I you never, never met Nicole? No. And I never met um, Christine, who was on other seasons. Oh, yeah. And I've never met, I think that's all the people I've never met. Yeah. Um, but everyone so far that I hang out with and know they're exactly like they are. Do you know if Chriselle is hoping to mend this relationship with Nicole, knowing that they were friends before, or is she just kind of done with her at this point and kind of sworn her off? I don't actually know. You don't You'd know. have to ask Michelle. I think, like, right now, because the drama's piping hot, I think she's a bit over it, but, you know. In the end, Michelle's like, just kind of wants to have peace and, like, isn't someone that wants to, like, dwell on and something be so draining, like, you know. So I'd think that she'd just want to give it up at some point, but I think okay. right now because it's spicy and everyone's talking about it. Yeah. But yeah, the people want to know. Uh, before we get to our caller uh, for Sweat in the Wedding, very important question, G. Yes. What is your favorite smell oh. and what do you think it says about you? My favorite smell? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say I love Chriselle's perfume. <laughs> okay. Is that a corny one? No, there's it no wrong answer. Right. She what does it think it says about you? I guess that you're in love. A loving right? husband. Yeah, yeah, a loving husband. <laughs> I'm wasn't. a loving yeah. husband. <laughs> Do you have any, uh, other than the smell of Rochelle and her perfume, is there like a smell in life that is nostalgic for you or that you just, every time you smell it, you're just like, fucking love that smell? I got two. I got one that's like the, the beach near my house. I grew up near the water in Melbourne, Australia. So, like, the smell of the ocean. And then the other smell is just, like, 
I love being on the road and playing in bands and like I've done that for majority of my life. So like just like a stage sweaty smell. <laughs> Okay. Little, Pretty gross, but musky like kind of just like being on stage and like yeah, giving it your all and just hitting the drums hard and you know. No, that makes total sense. Just like, like I, a stage I, smell, but also like the smell of like, um, like a stage smell is like a bit mus- musky and sweaty. But there's also like the fog machines have like a certain smell and like just like a bar kind of beer kind of smell sure, as well. Yeah. Is that gross, Ash? No, not at all. There's no wrong answer. So, like, okay. I used to r- compete in track and field and, like, the smell of a track, which is not exactly, like, good. It's just a little hot. It's like hot tar. Hot rubber. Yeah. But there's something about it. You're, mm. You would smell it, and it just kind of, yeah. yeah, it gets you kind of in the zone. I am so curious. Like, you mentioned playing with bands before and now having this, like, amazing solo career. Like, what was that transition like for you, and do you feel like you miss touring with more of, like, that ensemble or is there a band that you tour with now like how have you kind Mm. of like as a musician navigated more independence and kind of like creative control over your output um so now I still I still play in a band I play with uh three band members um and everyone in the band's a multi-instrumentalist so there's songs that I do singing behind the drum kit but then I'll get up and play a few songs on guitar then some on piano then we just all kind of switch and everyone in the band's a drummer. So there's moments where it's just everyone's like <laughs> going ham on drums. But yeah, I guess my career, I was a drummer before I became a solo artist. So I was traveling the world and playing with different bands and working in studios, just drumming for people. And drums has always been my my main thing and my first love um, was always drums. And then uh, I... Um, always secretly wrote music, but it was extremely queer and I hadn't come out yet. So um, it was kind of like my secret little passion I had behind the scenes that I would be um, writing music. And it wasn't until I came out that I was ready to share my music and my, like, I guess my singing voice and share my, my music. And so it was kind of like the drums was my protective layer for a lot of years of you know, that I hid behind a little bit. Um, And then I came out and then I was ready to just share my story and my music and then it went from there. Totally. Mm. Yeah. That's great. Should we get to uh, Sweat in the Wedding? Sweat in the Wedding. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. (laughs) Probably with the person who has the least sweat ever involved with their wedding. So it's a good good balance. How's it going? It's going good. How are you? Good. What's your name? Alex. Hi, Alex. How old are you? 23. How can we help Alex? Well, I uninvited my girlfriend to my sister's wedding. Okay. Is that, I'm assuming that's created some sort of issues or what, what's... Well, there's, there's been issues before, a little bit before this, but I uninvited her because of these issues. So. Okay. And how long has this relationship been going on? Like, what was the drama that happened? Uh, about and a year what... and six months. Okay. So, beginning of May, I graduated from college. And that was a really big deal for me. I had family coming out and everything. And so to give a little context, she did not come to my graduation. And those are the text um, messages you sent in, right? Yeah. So okay. part of it, part of those messages were from my graduation. Like there's a really, really mean one. And you'll see, I didn't, re- I wasn't able to respond for a little bit because I, I was in lineup. Like I was really busy. Um, and then the other part is when I mentioned, hey, I don't think it's a great idea for you to go to my sister's wedding. But to give a little context, when I graduated, she she was supposed to come. I had her take the whole day off. I had my family come. And we had talked about making plans for her to get a ride with my parents because, you know, traffic might have been crazy. And I kind of dropped the ball on that. And I wasn't, I didn't actually communicate that with my mom. I was a little bit busy. So it just slipped my mind. And so she got upset that I hadn't communicated that with my mom and she got to my house and she's like, you're not even here. Like your parents left already. Like your campus is 20 minutes away from like where I live. And it's not actually 20 minutes. It's just 20 minutes because of the traffic. Let's do a dramatic reading. Now, I just want to point out that you have her in your phone as future wife. Yeah. Did you do that or did she save herself? (laughs) Great question. question. Well, she has me in her phone as future wife and kind of gave me a little bit of crap. 
Save right. his okay. future wife. All right. Okay. So we're not so sure. Back. We're like future wife question mark. Yeah. She's yeah. like you haul with me. Yeah. <laughs> After this, I was like, uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> Gee, what you want to be Alex, and I'll be I'll be Alex. future wife question mark. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alex right. has now become Australian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Be sure to bring a book or sketchbook. Good morning. No worries. I always have it. I'm on my way now. Here. Hello, question mark, question mark. You're not even here, question mark. Fuck's sake, this is a place 20 minutes away. These are all individual texts. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm trying to find somewhere to park. I have no idea where to go. Did you not tell me they were supposed to take me with them? You said you'd be there by 11. They left at 10 fucking 50. And then finally, after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 text messages without a reply, uh, you finally reply. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're, we're, I'm assuming you were doing something. I had no idea where to go myself. So I had to go find parking. And even when I left at like 10, I was like, there was a graduation before. So I was having a hell of a time figuring out where to go. And so I had to get all dressed up and lined up. So why I wasn't responding was I didn't see any of these until I actually sat down Gotcha. In the stadium where we're graduating. So I'm I'm all in lineup not seeing any of this. Okay. So she wrote back, I'm going home. Enjoy the day with your family. Period. Period. I'm sorry again. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe next time you can spare five fucking seconds to tell your mom the plans that directly involve her. You know, so I'm not desperately trying to find parking soaked with sweat in a 90 degree car. Does she not have air conditioning? <laughs> No, her car doesn't have AC. Okay. Uh, on an but it was empty- also 60 degrees that day. To, <laughs> okay. to say. So like roll down a window, maybe? Yeah. She, she does, I okay. guess. I don't know. On an empty fuel tank. That's a her problem. Yeah. Uh, 10 minutes after the ceremony has apparently started. No response. <laughs> Did, what, you were just at the ceremony or? Well, yeah, I just, I didn't know what to say to that. I'm like, fuck. Because it just felt... Just when I first read that, I was like, why am I being blamed for all of this? Like, I'm sorry you're in a 90 degree car and your gas tank's on empty, but uh, what do you want me to do about yeah. that? Like, I'm sorry I dropped the ball in communication. That's why I just said I'm sorry. I hear you. And, like, just, just a small, small note. Yeah, I know. Even when you don't know what to say, there's nothing more infuriating. Even if she's kind of overreacting and things like that, mm-hmm. just like there's nothing worse than being ignored hindsight's 2020 but like even if you just said again i'm so sorry let's talk about this when i'm not here you know like obviously you don't Mm -hmm. want to get into it very text but like i'm sorry obviously there's some miscommunication and hopefully we can talk about it later on or something like that which i was going to say and then she sent that and i'm like all right no i'm not responding okay yeah that pissed that pissed me off so i'm more of the person who when I'm upset about something. I need to take a step back and be like, okay, am I feeling like valid? Like before I start like, like getting upset or like talking, I need to just take a step back and just evaluate what's going on and seeing like, is this okay for me to do? Like, yeah, totally. That's why yeah. like, in that situation, you're just like, you don't engage in the fight. You're just saying, Hey, again, mm-hmm. like, I'm sorry for this miscommunication. Can we talk about it when we're not both, you know, feeling disconnected or whatever it is? There's a ton of mis- miscommunication communication in this and i would also like to point out she was talking to my mom like she was texting my mom on like where to go and the details for the graduation and my mom was like well if you can't figure out what to do like you could just go home hang out with my dog bentley and like at least be there to go to lunch and dinner with us like she wants you here and she'll be really happy even if you're not able to come to the ceremony and what really just got to me was that she just gave up and left okay and so just to be you're you uninvited your girlfriend because you just think it'll be yeah. just a headache essentially well it's just it it's, there's just been tension with us and so pretty much she vented all of her feelings to me and every time i say okay i'm sorry i understand where you're coming from i'll say that at one point in the conversation and then we just drop it and don't talk about it again with my sister's wedding one my it's it's a small ceremony in hawaii and she's not paying for any of it my Me and my parents are paying for her flight, her stay, her food. Like, it's a big expense on our part. And then with just this tension going on between us, I didn't think it's a good idea. And my sister doesn't know her. And what did she have to say about that? Well, 
I also pointed out, I was like, hey, I, this is just what I'm thinking about. You know, I want, you know, like we want to communicate more. This was just on my mind. Um, I'm open to talking about this more in person. She was, <laughs> she was not happy. What did she say? It it kind of resulted into a whole thing where she's like, I'm tired of forcing myself in your life. I'm tired of feeling unwanted. I'm not a crazy, abusive girlfriend. That where, was where did, in there at one point. Where did, where did crazy, abusive come in? I don't know where any of this came from. She just kind of spiraled into talking about her feelings, making like how I made her feel unwanted just by saying that. I'm like, I understand where you're coming from. I just, I didn't want this to result in that because I want to talk about this in person. So nothing got misconstrued over what I texted and it just like a tumble hill. Do you want to be in this spiral. relationship? When we're together, I, I love her and I love spending time with her and we have our like inside jokes and it's fun hanging out with her and just being with her. But there's these times where she'll just act like a child or like not really hear what I'm saying. And I, she has to get all of her feelings out. She's just super anxious all the time, which is really hard for me because if I don't respond for a while, she starts freaking out or the immediate assumption is like, if she upsets me or something is that I'm going to break up with her. Like ever since that happened with graduation, it's kind of like the crack in like what I see. And I'm like, I don't know if I see this being long-term or, or like having a future where we get married or something with like, that's the future wife with the question mark thing. I think there's a lot of, like a lot of communication that needs to happen between you and your partner. Like I notice when you talk, you say she gets anxious when you don't like text back and then she feels like you're ignoring her. You know, that's as simple as like a communication thing. If you know that she gets anxious, if you don't reply, maybe that's when, yeah, like um, Nick said, you can text her being like, well, let's communicate later like right now I'm busy because then that stops her anxious mm -hmm. and her freaking out when you're not replying well it happens when I'm at work and she knows where I am so she just she'll just be like why aren't you responding right, right away and I'll be like kind of kind of doing stuff yeah do you reply just at work can't talk now I'll reply when I see them but I don't always see them yeah. as fast and then that's when she starts getting more anxious because I'm not seeing them yet have you had replying. have you had like a sit down conversation with her being like look darling like you know, you, you text me a lot, but I'm I'm really busy. Like I'm at work. I don't want you to think, you know, the reassuring talk with her. You might have had that conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. Yeah, we have. And like she she's like, no, I totally get you're at work. And like, I'll try to be better about it. And I'm like, okay, like okay. I, it's it's not a problem of like messaging each other. It's just I can't always respond as fast as you would like me to or I'm not always seeing these. And she yeah. still just gets a little bit anxious with all that. Have you ever gone to her when things aren't escalated and when you're not necessarily fighting over a particular topic and just say, hey, listen, like, can we talk? When one of us is upset or when, when you're upset with me, I feel like I'm just like responding via text and it's never efficient. And I just wish we could communicate more effectively when we are upset with mm -hmm. each other. And have you kind of made that request not in the heat of the moment? So every time I say, hey, can we talk? instantly it's are you breaking up with me okay so i think i should start like hey can we talk about this but then i know like if i say like i want to talk about this in person she's just going to keep going over it in text and she also pressures me so if i just leave it at hey can we talk like i have something on my mind she'll be like well why can't you tell me right now why can't you go over this over text and we'll just end up texting about it why don't you just wait till you're in person to bring because up because then she freaks out and i always i almost I no, no, I mean, like, don't, don't, once a week. don't bring up the, hey, can we talk over text? Oh. Because, yeah, I mean, mm. if I'm, hey, it's like, hey, I got to tell you something, but I can't tell you mm -hmm. now. I want you to sit on her for a week. I, yeah. yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah. That would make me anxious. Freak out. Get yeah. anxious. <laughs> if she's an anxious person, she's going to have various triggers. So, you know, it's not your fault, but there are things you can do to try to avoid triggering an anxious person if you don't want to have conversations via text don't even let her know that there's a conversation that you want to have via text because either you're going to have to talk to her about it or it's going to feel like torture for her to sit there and wait to like stew over what it is and you know like you're like oh well then i'll just i'll just let her know it's not a big deal and i'll give her this little nugget and then all of a sudden you, you know, like 20 minutes later you're having a full on conversation about the topic that you yeah. want to talk yeah you know so you just have to like avoid bringing 
it up all together and to sit down. And then when you do talk about it, instead of saying, hey, you know, can we talk? You know, always hit them with the compliments first. It's like, babe, I mm-hmm. love you. Like, oh, by the way, you know, you look great today. Hit them with some love. Hit them with some words of affirmation. Yeah. Hit them with some security about why you're feeling good about her or why you love her. But here's this thing that it's, it's been on my mind that I'd like for mm-hmm. us to work through. And anytime you can use that kind of us and we language, when you say us, she's going to hear us and she's not going to, th- she's going to think less about you breaking up with her. You know, I want to hear my partner talk about us, you know, and, and we, and when, and when she says I, or when I say I, it, it feels very much like one-sided, you know, it's just like, yeah. you know, you're almost up against each other. Well, I do this, or I never do that, or you do this, or you never do that. You know, it's just like, we could do a better job of this. I'd love for us to work on that, you know? And I think mm-hmm. the more you can use the us and we type of stuff, I think it'll really go over well with someone who might be more easily triggered and and anx- and kind of an anxious attachment style, if you will. I don't know if she is. I'm not here to diagnose. I have her. a feel. Yeah. I have a feeling she is. Do you want to be with her at the end of the day? I mean, it sounds. I'm getting like you kind of do, but it's like only if you know. I do love her, and I love spending time with her. It's just like there's just all these these just things that just get to me. So if we talk about the future, like if I just want to move anywhere other than where I'm at right now, she gets really upset with me and like, she'll say she's open to it, but then she's really not just based off like what she talks about to me. And like, if I bring up like maybe moving to like a place like Seattle, like she's like, no, it's like so expensive. And I just feel like a lot, a lot of our relationship is very skewed with me taking on majority of the financial burden. So say we move to Seattle, if that doesn't work out it's all on me financially so i have to have the backup plan i have to have the savings and everything in place it just feels like like i love her but there's a lot of logistics that i don't feel like are working but i still want to try sure i mean we always we never want to quit on the people we love but i'd love to hear Mm -hmm. from you what are things about your relationship that you think are worth fighting for just our overall like dynamic like we we get each other like I don't even have to like say anything we just look at each other and like kind of know what we're thinking and like we're very similar in like what our hobbies are like it's just fun to spend time with her and even do just like even if we're doing nothing I just enjoy her presence what is something that you think you two are really compatible over I don't actually think we have anything that's super compatible over okay there's a lot of things we clash on that's that's a big deal compatibility isn't as sexy as chemistry you yeah. know people love chemistry it's just like oh I feel so much chemistry with you and it's amazing and that's hot yeah. and we love the passion but chemi- you know and i often say chemistry gets us together but it's compatibility that kind of keeps us together if you have a hard time pointing out one thing that you two are compatible over it's tough you know like you know relationships yeah. are about compromise but it, your whole relationship shouldn't be one big compromise where everything that she wants to do, you're like, okay, this is your day. And then everything that you mm-hmm. want to do, she's just, okay, I guess, you know, that's, this is draining, you know, and yeah. I've been in those relationships and I got to tell you, like dating someone where you have a lot of points of compatibility, whether it's food you like or things you like to do or TV shows you watch, like that matters over time. It's just, mm. you got to want to love spending time with your person. And if you're not compatible, like other than like, some made me good sex. Like it's, you need that compatibility. I don't know. I feel like deep down, maybe she's just not your person. I think also something that um, I keep thinking about that you said before about the wedding, when it came down to, you know, if she should come or not, something you said uh, about your sister, you said, you know, they don't even know each other. Like they've never met. They don't even know each other. I think Mm -hmm. when you found your person, you were so excited to share that person with your family. Like I was so excited to like introduce my partner to my family, like couldn't wait. It wasn't a, you know, like a a burden or like something, you know, that I would be like, they don't even know each other. So like, what's the point in bringing her? Like, like I couldn't wait, you know, when you find your person, you can't wait to introduce them to all your people, you know? So I think that's also something that, you know, 
pricked my ears up a little bit. Yeah. And your person shows interest in getting to know your family. Like it seemed kind of from the way you were saying it, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seemed like there was also like, oh, part of the reason they don't really have a relationship is because like your girlfriend hasn't really taken any kind of like interest in trying to craft that. Mm. And that in itself can feel like a little hurtful. You're like, oh, I wish you were as excited in the way that like I'm excited. Or they're just kind of easy to be around or they kind of step Mm -hmm. up, you know, and there's nothing worse than having a partner where it's just like you got to make sure they're constantly okay and they're doing they're behaved they're behaved and they're taken care of and it's just like you know like ugh. and i was initially really excited for her to meet my parents like i had we have her on the invite and everything and had her all booked but then after the all this and just kind of thinking about it how she acted when she first met my parents she was on her phone half the time which really bothered me and we had a conversation about it and then just meeting my friend, she literally put her earbuds in when they're trying to talk to her. Yeah. And so it also just like thinking about it, it makes me really nervous for her to meet the rest of my family because that can be really intense for someone. And I know she's more on the introverted side and a little socially awkward when it comes to like big groups of people. So then just thinking about that, I'm like, oh, this makes me nervous. Like they're not going to like her. And like, I was really excited. And just all these reasons are coming up for me. And I'm like, this is not a good idea. Does she recognize her introverted personality and her awkwardness? She does. And as someone who can be introverted and awkward, like, does she go out of her way? Because you can't just keep saying, well, fuck it. I'm introverted. I'm awkward. You, Mm. You can't just, it's not an excuse to be a dick. I know it's mm-hmm. it's harder in group settings. You get a little bit more emotionally taxed, you know, un- unlike an extrovert. But like you could say, you know, sometimes I have to say, oh, sorry, babe, or I need to. All right. But you have to like get in the zone for your partner. She should know it means a lot to you for her to connect with your friends. She should know it means a lot to you for her to connect with your family or to like blend in with your family. And she doesn't seem to be willing to do that. Even after our conversation, like there's not much of an effort to like bond with them or really talk to them. Like the last time my parents came in, because she's met them a few times, like she really only responded. Like if my dad like said something, she didn't try to initiate any, any conversation or anything of the sort. So here's what my gut tells me based off of talking to you. And I've been in your shoes before. And, you know, is this your first girlfriend, second? Or like, no, or... this, is, this is my second girlfriend. Okay, so, but, early, you know, you're 23, early in life. You know, when we're younger, mm-hmm. you have future wife here on your phone. I think often in early relationships, we meet someone, we get super excited, you know, and you start talking mm-hmm. about your hopes and dreams, and you put future wife in your phone. And I have mm-hmm. no doubt that you care about her and that you love her. And that you wish her the best. But I feel like most of your relationship is based off of the idea that you have for this relationship and the promises you guys made to one another early in the relationship. And now it's just a struggle. And you spend a Mm -hmm. lot of time in this relationship, stressed out, anxious, making sure she's okay, wondering if she's, she's okay, making sure that, you know, or being frustrated with her that she's not stepping up and, you know, making it a priority, the things that matter to you, et cetera, et cetera. And I think you're feeling this guilt inside about the idea of breaking up with her because of all these promises that you two made to one another early in your relationship. And I guess I'm just here to say, like, listen, people can break up. You have the right to realize that maybe she's not your person and that, you know, maybe that you two just aren't compatible. And sure, you could You could go to couples therapy. You could try all these things. You could exhaust all your options. But, you know, I asked you, what is something that is you you two are compatible over? And you had a really hard time giving one answer. And that's okay. But I think maybe you just need to, you know, have that honest conversation with yourself first and just realize that maybe there's just not a lot here to keep trying and that, well, you give it, you gave it your best shot, but, you know, you need some, you need compatibility. At, on some level about something mm-hmm. to make a relationship work. And I just think you're just feeling a lot of guilt and a lot of fear about disappointing her. And for all the questions of, are you going to break up with me? Are you going to break up with me? That makes it extra hard knowing if you do want to break up, that you're going to be the bad guy and she's going to like throw things in your face. I fucking knew it. You're going to always fucking, you know, do shit like that. And as hard as it is, I think the best thing maybe from what I hear is that it's got to rip the bandaid off and she might hate you. She might think you're the bad guy. It's okay. 
she will heal mm-hmm. and get over it. But I don't think this relationship is serving anyone because it just sounds like a lot of anxious people just kind of being unwilling to face the truth that maybe you two don't bring out the best in one another. Yeah. If you yeah. find yourself feeling bad, like she probably should spend some time on her own. Speaking as like the person who's been the like, why aren't you responding to my text? Like she should probably spend some time on her own and feel a little bit more self-sufficient. Or she should date someone who is super responsive and can give her exactly what she wants in that department. So yeah. like, don't feel bad because you're setting her like you're letting you're setting both of yourselves free so that way you can both find situations that like serve you more. You have the right to be happy and you have the right to be with someone you're compatible with and you have the right to be with someone who brings more contentment and calmness and peace into your life rather than anxiousness and frustration and sadness. And I think G made an excellent point. You should want her there. You should want to have the person you love at your sister's. I mean, it's great to like be in love at a wedding. Mm. It's so great, you know, because you kind of look to your partner's side and like that could be us someday, you know, and like everyone who's in love, who's at a wedding feels a a bond and everyone who's at a wedding in a relationship that doesn't feel that connected. It's like a it's a really great litmus test, you know, to be at a relationship as a couple because it either is going to elevate you two and feel make you guys more connected or it's going to you're going to feel like this kind of awkward divide between the two of you. And I, I feel like in your gut, you, you know where you, you two stand. I definitely do. I just, it's just so hard because of that guilt that I just, I feel bad and I just don't know how to even approach that subject. Just, you just like, got to, you just got to, you got to do it. Yeah. And you got to do it in person, not via text. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she's just, she's going to cry and be mad. And you just say, listen, I just don't think we're compatible. We're, we don't make each other happy. You're not happy with me. I'm not happy with you. And like, you just be direct. Don't say things like, well, maybe we could take a break or maybe we'll see in the future. Like I, it, people say that when it gets awkward and they see their partner crying and, but that's only going to make things harder in the long run. You know, don't be mean, but be very direct about your feelings and it's okay if she thinks you're the bad guy, you're better off because she just she needs to kind of go through that grieving process of anger, sadness and things like that. And you just got to do it. You got this. You got it. Let us know how this goes. Like, I'll send you an email mm-hmm. to check in. I know this is like so hard yeah. and challenging and it's you know easy to talk about, but hard to do. So we will check in. We really want an update. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to wait till next weekend because I can't. That's okay. I don't see her this week and she works. So I'm like, mm. that's OK. Yeah. <laughs> just don't. Just don't. I mean, the good news is you <laughs> uninvite her to the then. wedding. She might see it coming. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's She's seen true. it coming for a while. There you go. Yeah, kind of got to save the date of <laughs> <Yeah>. breakups. <laughs> All right. Well, keep us this posted. I'm sorry you're going through this, but I really think it's for the best. I I feel like mm-hmm. in your heart of hearts, it's it's what you're doing this for the both of you. She won't see it right away, but I promise you, it's for the best. You got this, darling. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, take care. Thanks for calling. All (laughs) right, bye bye. Gee, you got uh, your first North American tour coming up. How excited you are for that! What's the thing that most excites you? What do you want the audience to know about this tour? This tour, well, I reckon it's a pretty fun show. There's a lot of drumming. Drumming's uh, my main instrument, so there's a lot of big drum solos and drums is a big part of the show. So if you like seeing people tear up a drum kit, then it's a fun show to come to. Amazing. What's the thing you're looking forward to the most other than Brett and Jason doing being background stage. dancers? Yeah. That's going to be a big highlight. Um, <laughs> I honestly just like seeing different parts of America and meeting different people in America. Like America is so different. You go to each state and it's like wildly different from the last. And you guys all have funny accents, like it changes where you go. You guys all talk funny. I bet you guys are sitting here thinking I talk funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just love being on the road and seeing new places and meeting new people. How do you like to interact with the crowd most? Like Taylor Swift is dating some, who is, who is she dating? Matt Healy. Matt Healy. He goes around and makes out with the crowd, which seems a little aggressive, but hey, to each their own. Do you have a thing? How do you like to interact with the audience? I mean, stage presence, it seems to be such a big part of being a rock star and engaging. Like, do you have a go-to thing to how to connect with your audience? I definitely go down to the pit or down to the front and hang out with people. Sometimes I jump the barrier and then I get involved with everyone. But yeah, I do a lot of talking in between songs as well. So there's a lot of banter that goes down, some chats. 
But yeah, I like to, if people are lining up beforehand, I like to go say, hey, because I used to be that person that would line up outside the venue. And, you know, I was a big music fan in Australia. So I like to hang out after the show and before the show with people. And, um, you know, the fans and people that come to your show is the reason that I have my career. So I'm always very thankful. And I try to reply to as many people after the show as I can before bed to say thank you for coming to my show or stick around and sign some T-shirts or anything. But people that come to your show, it's the whole reason I have a job. Yeah. Always, like, stoked. And I can't believe that, you know, like, I, I was just, a, like, a kid making music in my bedroom in Melbourne, Australia, to even have my own headline USA tour is, you know, pretty wild, and I'm very, very thankful. Do you have, uh, growing up being a musical fan, do you have – an artist or artist or band that inspired you or that you look up to or you just enjoy listening to? What are, what are some of your favorites out there? And, and is there an artist that growing up you've kind of mimicked or kind of taken ideas from or inspired you when you make music? Yeah, I think growing up for me is like a little queer non-binary kid. I really, really struggled to find anyone in media across the board, not just music, but in movies and TV. Um, I really, really struggled to find an idol. And I know that if there was an artist like me openly like queer, non-binary and drumming, it really would have changed my life if I, you know, watching MTV as a kid, you know, I really like, I'd look up and the Pussycat Dolls and Beyonce and there's so many artists that I was like, it's just not like me. I want to be more like Travis Barker and take my top off and just rip up a drum kit. So I really struggled with finding an idol when I grew up because I just didn't have any representation that was anything like me. The closest I had was my drum teacher, Jenny, that I met when I was 12, 11, 12 years old and taught me drums from when I was t 11, 12 till like 18, 19. Um, and she was amazing and she was dressed like I wanted to dress and played drums and did backing vocals and she was exactly everything I wanted to be growing up. So I found my idol in her um, and just wanted to follow in her footsteps. What is your kind of dream in terms of your career goals like mm -hmm. uh, you're already very successful you're a star but where is there anything in terms of uh, like a fantasy that you have mm -hmm. you know uh, when it comes to your career that you will be like holy shit this is this is it yeah I think um, for me the most important thing is just my general happiness I think you can win as many awards and sell as many concerts out but if you're not happy at the end then what's the fucking point I think what brings me the most joy in my career which brings me the biggest smiles is seeing my favorite people my like loved ones so like mm -hmm. my dad and my mom and my sister and my step bros and you know Chriselle seeing them all so happy in the joy that I bring them like my dad is an accountant but he wanted to be a rock star and he my first memories of him was playing in shitty bars and I thought he was playing in a fucking arena, but he was playing to like five people in a shit dive bar in Australia. He wanted to be a rock star, but getting to bring him on the road brings him so much joy and I've brought him out on stage a couple of times. So That's awesome. And getting to take my mum to see Billie Eilish, mum was like, you know, classic mum, like had her phone out the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, mum, you're not even going to watch these videos back, but she was like, it was the best concert for her and she thought it was so fun and, being able to provide for my loved ones and through my success. And obviously I love playing live and I grew up playing drums and playing in wedding bands and all these other bands. So I just love being on stage and that interaction you have with band members and playing. But I think overall I love my loved ones and seeing yeah. their reaction to shit is really nice to be able to do that as a job. Yeah, musicians love to do collaborations. Is there a musician out there that you'd love to collaborate with? Like maybe do drums, like play drums with, along with Travis Barker or something else? Or yeah. have you ever thought about something like that? Yeah, me and Travis have worked together. We made a cool track. It does not released. I'm not sure if it will get released, but he's mm -hmm. awesome. He's got a drum room with like eight drum kits in it. It literally blew my mind. And he showed me all his drums and I was just like in awe. It was the coolest thing. But yeah, there's lots of artists I want to work with. Or I just feel like at heart I'm such a musician, so even just drumming on people's records, I don't like, it doesn't need to say featuring G Flip, but just like, you know, working in the studio and putting drums on people's songs, I feel like 
early 2000s, there was a lot of drum kit on pop music and then it kind of became like an artificial kind of 808 drum beats and stuff. And I think now in pop music, it's kind of coming back, real drum kit at least. So, um, yeah, just working on people's records behind the scene as well as, you know, getting up and featuring drums on someone's performance at a festival could be cool. Anything, even just like getting up and doing a low-key wedding gig on drums would be fun. Do you want to play at my wedding? Or? Fuck yeah, yeah, bro. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hells yeah. <laughs> That'd be epic. Right. Yeah. Love little that. Drum, drum feature. I'm going to text now and be like, found a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, G, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, you mentioned not having someone to look up to growing up, especially that reminded you of yourself or in any sort of media. I recently saw a TikTok of these two. I think they're little Australian kids. Yes. And the brother is like talking to the little sister yeah. and talking about you. And yeah. the sister, you know, is saying she's a great drummer. And the brother's like, yeah, but they're they them. They're non-binary and goes yeah. down this whole little rabbit hole. What does that mean for you to hear not only like, I don't know, people mm. talking about you in general, but little kids who are not only in awe of your music, but you yeah. as a human being? Yeah, I've actually got tears in my eyes. That video, like, makes me cry fully. Yeah, it means so much. I feel like, oh, God, I don't want to cry on this. <laughs> I feel like growing up I had so many dark times not understanding my gender and not understanding what it was to be non-binary. And then, um, you know, trying to, uh, uh, oh, I don't want to fucking cry on here. No, I'm crying. crying. Everybody's crying. We're all crying. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just thinking about my own journey and not understanding myself as a kid and having so many dark times and dark days. And then, um, you know, me just being so unashamed to be myself and trying to be so as authentic as I can be to tell my story and be that voice for the next generation. You know, I think about that a lot. And um, that video really confirmed that, oh, holy shit, like, you know, sometimes you know, me just being myself is bigger than I thought it could be. So, yeah, <laughs> that video like blew my mind and it's just so simple. And the way that little, um, um, these little kids just talk about being non-binary is so pure and so easy and it, it's so relatable and it's so easy to understand kids. Like it's not too hard for them to understand. And, um, that video was just so emotional for me. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I just think it's great parenting and she didn't interject. She just like listened and it yeah. was just so cute. Well, the so. boy nailed it. No, he, he had the perfect it. little definitions. I loved it. And the little sister is just like, okay, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Violet's just like, yep, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, I get it. And then the mum goes, so, um, so how do we, how do we say that? And they're like, they're a good, they're a great drummer. They're a good drummer. It's just really, really, really cute that you know, these conversations are being had and, you know, kids are getting it and it's just, you know, moving the needle to, I think, a more accepting, beautiful future for people that are gender diverse. Um, all it comes down to is education, you know? So, yeah, it was fucking cute. <laughs> That's great. Uh, gee, it's been such a pleasure having you. Oh, dude. You. Um, Thanks for having me. It's great been awesome. getting to know you. Congratulations again on the, uh, the wedding. Cheers. Can you just you know anything final thoughts you know where can people you know get tickets to your tour any other performances you have coming up you know please plug away uh, all the great things that you're doing yeah i'm playing a few shows across the states for pride this june um and then yeah i've got my headline tour which is going to be really fun going across the states you can get tickets on my website gflipmusic.com is that the website yeah, my manager's like, yeah, Great. that's right. And we'll put it in our show description <laughs> too for anyone who uh, wants to go ahead and click on that. And then overall, thank you for having me. You guys have been lovely. You're fucking great at what you do, man. Your advice is great. And oh, thanks. Yeah, you're well, super you're, nice. you're excellent as well. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and look forward to you playing at my wedding. Fuck yeah. yeah all right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I right. love a wedding. Love that. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at com for all things Ask Nick. Uh, we got another episode of Better Date Than Never live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. What are we talking about? Nudes. Nudes. Love. Love a good nude. Nudes save relationships. I honestly think that. Okay. Know. I don't know if they're great for dating, but in relationships. Do you love a good nude? 
A good mood is good when you're away from each other for a while. Yeah. 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 Little, you know, I think in the relationship, it keeps it spicy, it keeps it hot. spicy. You know, a little risky outside of a relationship, you know, internet's forever. Um, water, also watermark your nudes. Watermark your watermark nudes. Watermark your nudes. <laughs> If you're going to do it outside of a relationship. Anyway, G Flip, it's been a, such a pleasure. Thank you so much again. Thank you all who all listen. We'll see you tonight live at 9 p.m. Eastern for Better Late Than Never. Bye. See ya. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.